Healthcare is changing, and Dr. Nancy R.N. is here for you. The topics are many, but each program stands on its own with three key action points for you to learn. Your guide to a healthier you in a changing world. Dr. Nancy R.N. Welcome to Dr. Nancy R.N. Healthy World, Healthy Nation, Healthy You. This show is dedicated to you, the healthcare consumer. I'm Nancy Valentine, PhD and registered nurse. And we have a very interesting show today that will be the end of a series of conversations with a couple who have shared their journey with oral cancer. And I think that what we'd like to do in this show is really talk about what it was like for them to really share this story with you publicly. Because as I explained to them when I first met them, once you tell this story, you're really telling your story to the world. And so what we are uh, entitling our show today is Profiles in Courage, the Clark and Anita Natali, Journey to Recovery from Oral Cancer. And once again, I'd like to welcome Anita McGinn Natali, wife, mother, grandmother, volunteer, artist extraordinaire, <laughs> and her uh, recovering husband, Clark Natali, who is a very uh, excellent person, as, as you've seen him in other shows, and he has been a developer in insurance and real estate. And he's also a golfer, so he's a golf extraordinaire. Uh, he may not tell you that, but I think that he is. So we are going to talk to you today about what it was like for them to really share this story. And let me give you some background. I first met Anita through my colleagues at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. They told me about a family and patient-centered care program that they are running at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. And when they were doing the show on what this, this project entails, I said, gee, wouldn't it be interesting if we could do a show with one of your volunteers? And uh, Mary Walton, the nurse ethicist, said, gee, Nancy, I think we could find someone. I have someone in mind. So then shortly thereafter, I met Anita. And Anita came in, as you can see, bright, beautiful, dynamic, and we started chatting before the show. And I said, Anita, how did you get involved with that particular uh, council? And she said, well, my husband had cancer and we spent a lot of time at the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. And I inquired as to whether he, he had um, been able to be successful in being treated. She said, oh yes, he's doing very well. She said, I often think of my marriage as my marriage before cancer and my marriage after cancer. And I said, gee, Anita, having just met you, I think that would be an incredible story to tell. So one thing led to another, and I asked if, if her husband, Clark, might be open to really sharing this story. And she said, I don't know, let me go ask him. So she did, and, and Clark, being a very open person, a very good businessman, said, I, I, you know, I'll give it some thought. I actually made a home visit because I felt that in sharing such a story, people really need to know what's entailed because they're not just telling the story to a few people. These, these videos can be really worldwide and therefore people need to really understand and recognize that by sharing this, they are sharing it with the world. And when I got to meet both Clark and uh, Anita together, you could just see how dynamic they are, how caring they are to one another, and I asked them if they would again move to, to doing the show. One show led to approximately six shows because each stage was really an installment for each of us. There was so much rich material in, in your stories that it just seemed to me that every one of the messages was something that people could really use as consumers. That they, they were telling you about their journey as lessons learned, as tips, as what a real life couple would really have to go through. And I'm happy to say that they have come through with flying colors. But not everybody has that success, but many more people could have that kind of success if they could take these lessons learned from Clark and Anita. So the purpose of our discussion today is really to have them reflect on what it was like to do a show. Because if truth be told, we would hope that other people like Clark and Anita might come forward to do this kind of profiles and courage because real people struggling with real issues and problems is the reality of healthcare and health journey people that are on these journeys and what they can do to make that journey as successful as possible. 
So let me, with that long introduction, <laughs> um, let me just turn to our guests and just say, you know, thank you again, Clark. Anita for for really being so open and honest and and very thoughtful in how you've really approached this but I guess what I would like to start with was what was it like for you to tell this story can you think of you know when you started what did you think was going to come out of this well I actually wasn't real sure but um, as the story uh, evolved um, it, it gave me a sense to reflect on what I went through. And I think it's very important that uh, people faced with a similar situation have the knowledge and um, opportunity to see what someone would go through. I think having that benefit would definitely have a positive um, effect on any decision that they would have to make. Right, because you were faced with many decisions along the way. Yes, I was. And it was uncharted territory. Absolutely. Right. right. Yes. Right. Well, how about you, Anita, in terms of you know when you started this, the storytelling part of it, how did you experience that? I would say similar to Clark in that it did give me also a time to reflect about what we actually went through and you, you, you almost forget a little bit about details and I en actually enjoyed reliving some of them because it reinforced, yeah, we really did come a long way. It was good to remind ourselves of that. It was, it was a tough journey but we came through it mm -hmm. and, and there's, there's definitely a the opportunity to have a positive outcome from a serious health crisis. Right, right. But when every show seems to lead to another, <laughs> did, did you think, gosh, here's another installment. I, to give you an example, our first show was around Clark and Anita receiving that first diagnosis and being so shocked about the fact that this was a very serious diagnosis and that they had some very serious decision making to do in a very short period of time. So we did that first show. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that shock and disbelief, if you really think about you know, the stages of grief, the disbelief that it could be something this serious in such a short period of time since Clark had had a previous dental appointment just seemed unreal, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Then we moved from that to a show of Clark talking about his own experience as the patient. When he first heard about this, this diagnosis, really what kind of changes he had to, to face, the fact that he had to go through such a serious and painful set of procedures, and that was really not what you had in mind when you were taking early retirement in your early 60s, correct? That is correct, yeah. Right, right. And then we moved to a third show of Anita speaking about what it meant to be the primary caregiver and how she had to walk through so much learning and, and so much coping hmm. with what that really meant. And as a nurse myself, I had to really say my hat is off to Anita for all of the actual technical nursing care that she had to give her husband because frankly, some of the things that she was doing are the kinds of procedures, suctioning, turning, um, you know, taking care of, of wound management, is the kind of tasks that nurses, registered nurses in hospitals are really tasked to do. But through the great guidance and the wonderful education that the nurses gave Anita, she was able to take that up. So that, they were three shows right then and there. So to your point, it, it meant a lot to you to, to go back and sort of relive that. It wasn't necessarily a negative, it turned out to be a positive to sort of speak to that. Yeah, very positive. Right. Yeah. So any highlights from those? Just let's, let's take those three shows to, uh, to begin with. Any highlights from those that you would say were the things that, you know, had meaning to you and therefore you think have meaning to others? Well, um, I, I think the most meaningful was that it gave me an opportunity to reflect 
on how much my wife was really truly involved and what great support she gave me to make it through um, uh, to, to get me where I am today. I think that was the greatest meaning of the show. I, I think r talking about it um, brought it out more. That, that's beautiful. Anita, that must be really nice to hear that. It's very nice to hear that. <clears throat> it's true. But, but I do know, Clark's always been appreciative of, of what I've done for him. But I think he makes a point. When you're, when you're going back and reliving it again, you, you do, there are parts of it you kind of forget. You, right. you put away. You're not there anymore. But I think it's really important for people to know that if you're going through a serious crisis, there are so many challenges. There's the big challenge, but within that big challenge are all these other little challenges that you can't always anticipate. You know, loneliness. Nights when my husband was sleeping and I was just lonely. I missed him. I missed him prior to getting sick. Now he was someone who needed my help mm -hmm. and I was caring for him and I, I wanted to care for him, but it was pretty lonely because I didn't have the man that I had before t sitting and conversing and having a conversation like right. we used to. Right. So right. There, there are all kinds of things you can't foresee that you're going to experience, but they're all, I think, part of that process. Right. And I just hope that people will take the show and know that or, or have some hope that as tough a situation as you are going to be in, there is a there is a light on the other side. You right. know, there is a there's a I guess there's that uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, you mm -hmm. know? There's mm -hmm. something well, I feel like our relationship today is is just as strong, maybe maybe stronger. We had a pretty strong relationship prior to this. Health that, crisis. That's certainly a plus. It was a plus and I and I really enjoyed taking care of him. I really enjoyed it. I felt like it was my way to share his illness mm -hmm. taking relieving if I could release some of his burden or all of it I would have done that but so this was my way of maybe relieving some of your burden I, you know yeah. like my caring for you made me feel like I could take on something that you had I know I didn't but I mean that's what it made me feel right. like <laughs> right. but you're saying that it did work it did relieve a lot of your burden. Oh yeah, it, it, it did. I guess what I meant was that I couldn't take the cancer away from you. Yeah, I know. But in caring for you, I felt like I could. I was doing as much as I co possibly could to help him get through this. Yeah. That made me feel, and it also made me feel uh, an, an integral part of his care. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. But just, you were. I mean, right. But really. I mean, I wasn't just a. a uh, standby, I was right. on standby, just watching, or not standby, that's not the right word, but I wasn't an observer. Right. I was an active participant. Right. I, I think that's part of my nature, though. I really want to be an active participant in most other things. I want to kind of get in there and do it instead of just be the observer. Right. So that was, it came pretty natural, didn't it? Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. But often people would say, you know, we got through this experience, like, why talk about it again? It could just bring up, you know, some some difficult times, it's best to put it aside. But I think what I heard you just say, Clark, is that by having this discussion in a very public way, it really reinforced your appreciation for what your wife was able to do for you. Yeah. You may have been an appreciative guy before, which is wonderful. I mean, that's a, that's a, a wonderful attribute to start with. And a, and a great relationship is another wonderful attribute to start with. But through this, when they say, you know, till death do, do us part, you know, you know, richer for poor in sickness and in health, I mean, you really experienced that, but you also were able to reflect back to Anita, your appreciation of her. Yep. And we got through it. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I, I think we are much stronger, not that we weren't strong, but, um, um, I'm searching for the right word. Um, maybe um, our bond is much tighter. Yeah, I think so. Than, 
Yeah. Because I because I, what I've noticed since Clark has recovered, I had a, a few health issues along the way within the last two years, and Clark became my caregiver. Mm -hmm. And he, what a sensitive, loving caregiver he is. You know, that was really, that was wonderful, experiencing that on the other side. Right. So I, I think... I think you've always been a caring person, but I definitely think that this this has been an opportunity for us to sort of dig even deeper. Right, right. Well, that that's wonderful feedback for you too. I mean, it's not just one way. I mean, and again, I think that's a very good uh, lesson learned. I mean, there may be the identified patient, so to speak, which in this case was was Clark, but then as he was stabilizing, you know, life goes on, and and Anita had some issues that she really needed to have that support on. So. It's good that you know through her giving to you, you could then you know give back maybe even better than you would have in the past had you not had this experience. I think that's possible. Yeah. I do definitely think that's possible. Mm -hmm. Made you more caring and mm -hmm. more sensitive mm -hmm. to what another person, in this case Anita, you know would need. Then from from those first three shows that you know did that deep dive into their uh, their journey, the first parts of it, we then had a show with one of their. Um, surgeons, a reconstructive plastic surgeon from the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, who talked about all the steps in really the reconstruction and the ups and downs of that. And I think that that was another opportunity for you to impart some of the technical details and some of the, the steps in that journey from what you really had to experience from, a, from an actual surgical procedure. And do you think that that really helped uh, our, our listeners to understand what was entailed? Yes. Um, when, when this all happened, nobody really told us what to expect, what we would be in for. And it was an eye-opening experience. Mm. And I have to tell you, Dr. Lowe was wonderful. Um, he explained every step, what I had to go through, uh, what happened during complications, and how we were going to uh, continue to be successful. And uh, the show really pointed that out. Mm -hmm. And it's important. And it's important to me um, getting to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And there's no other way to explain it. Right. But it was important. Right. And I think that what was discussed in that particular uh, program were some of the setbacks mm -hmm. and how, as, as a team, you had to really confront those setbacks and, as you said, just keep moving that ball forward mm -hmm. no matter what. And also it, uh, it was underscoring how powerful that relationship can be. Mm -hmm. And I would concur that Dr. Lowe is an exemplary uh, person mm -hmm. in terms of his communication and his, his style, you know, and also his knowledge, his expertise, but certainly his caring nature certainly was demonstrated in those discussions. And I'm really glad that he was able to come on this program because I, I'm happy that that the viewers can experience a little bit of, the, of his personality and, and his caring attitude. Because one thing that we both experienced was when there were complications, he always had a plan. He always had some, something he could, he always had a plan. He, he always knew what he would, he didn't always know what he was going to do at that moment, but he always was positive in that we are going to fix this. We're right. going to take care of right. this. It's so important as a patient and a caregiver to have someone who's looking at the positive side of things. You know that yes, we're gonna we're gonna fix this. We're gonna make this right. I, I, he he's a wonderful person, and I'm so glad that viewers had a chance to experience him. Right, right, and I think that <clears throat> again, it's it's really to be an example of the kind of relationship that is really critical. It's not like just nice to have. It's absolutely pivotal. And I think that that's what we would expect all physicians to demonstrate. I mean, some people have a more bedside-like manner than others, but having that communication and that clarity of, of thought and planning 
is really, I think, a very reasonable expectation for people to have because you, you got so much out of it. It really helped get you through some of those major bumps in the road. So I, I just want to underscore that. Not only was it an in interesting show, but I think it sets the bar mm -hmm. high for what consumers should be expecting of, of their surgical teams. I think I agree, and I think that people um, really should see <coughs> their health care as a team effort. That you are, you're not just a, a person that everyone, everything's being done to you. You are part of the solution, and to be in that relationship with your physicians and nurses and other clinicians is very important. And part of that is speaking up and asking questions. Right and being willing to, willing to learn and right. I, th I hope that people will get that from this program as well. I think so. And I just want to underscore that Dr. Lowe was one member of a multi-faceted uh, surgical team. Uh, there were some other physicians that were part of that program as well. Not that they came on this particular show, but, but I'm t speaking about the program of care for Clark. So I think that it was wonderful that Dr. Lowe could represent some of his colleagues mm -hmm. in that discussion, but it is a team even, even among physicians. There, mm -hmm. was, there was more than one person involved. Yes. Um, then, then we moved to, um, again through this, this tour of our own as we were sort of uncovering it, when Anita told me that she had found a great deal of solace in the Oral Cancer Foundation website during her darkest evenings and nights, really trying to search out information, trying to find other people that were going through a similar challenge, and she did find it through the Oral Cancer Foundation website. We then invited a key person from the Oral Cancer Foundation to come and talk with us about their, their mission and how they are helping people and what they do and what they hope to do as they grow, and, and they're doing that through fundraisers and walks and awareness building. And uh, I think that Nita g gave us a great overview of that when she was talking about some of her paintings that she as an artist has uh, donated uh, to the Oral Cancer Foundation to help them achieve their aims. Um, so I think that it's a, it's a whole community that you've been talking about. It's, I mean, when people say in any kind of challenge, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. I think that you two were really speaking for a whole village of people that have been in back of you through this whole period of time, including some family. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we definitely had well, the support of my sister, who yeah. is a nurse practitioner, and uh, I, can't, I, I can't thank her enough. Both of us feel so indebted to her for coming and staying with us and offering advice and being a phone call away right. when we had questions. In fact, when Clark was in the hospital a few times, this is sort of a funny story, he wasn't able to speak, he had a trach, and he would write his messages down and whenever something seemed to go awry from his point of view, he would write, call Karen, call Karen, like asking, her, asking me to call my sister and let her know what's going on to right. get her advice. So she was very willing to help. But you're right, it does take, it, you're not alone. You're not alone, ever. Right. You have, if you have family and friends that can support you, can support you great, but you have your health care team, you, you really, you, you don't ever have to go through these things alone. Right, that's very important. Now, in terms of your family, knowing that you've been taping these shows and they have, uh, they're about to be released, um, w have you gotten any comments from friends or family about doing this? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can't wait. <laughs> they can't wait. <laughs> they want to see the two stars. Right. right. My, my sister is very was ha is always very encouraging. She's she's uh, as a, and she's also a nurse, as I said, and she's very much excited about what these shows, the, po the possibilities for these shows, how they're going to help other people. How we that's the goal, and she's very excited about that. So. Yeah, we have a lot of, everyone's, people are rallying behind us, they're cheering us on. That's great. It'll be exciting. That's great. Well, we hope that, um, that this will set the bar high for, for other people to come and join us and, and share their stories. Not every story is going to have as positive an outcome as Clark and Anita. Some people do lose their loved ones to a very serious illness. But in every case, there's something that can be imparted for others, which is really hope-giving. That's part of this, is to be both informational, but also hope-giving. Would you agree? Yes, okay. absolutely. So if, if you were to give an invitation 
to others who may be listening, what would you advise them to do in terms of if we really wanted to expand this series on profiles and courage? What would you say? Well, I would say um, get involved. Um, I think getting involved is important and it will also um, help you get through whatever situation you're involved in. Don't you think? I agree. I think that if you're interested in participating and sharing your story, that uh, doing so is a great opportunity <coughs> for personal growth and reflection and also you, you have an opportunity to help other people um, who will identify with your situation and the best way to do that is to contact Nancy on her website. Can I say that web website? Certainly. www.drnancyrn.com. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. And she wasn't paid to say that. Um, I, I, when I started this idea for doing the Dr. Nancy RN show, it was really to bring together many health experts, health professionals from all walks of life, because there are so many health issues that, that we are dealing with. And the three goals of this show is one, to translate health care reform for people, because there is so much changing with our new laws and new regulations. And a lot of it is exciting, and I think that a lot of it will be unfolding to bring new opportunities, new, new mechanisms for many people, not only the uninsured, but even the insured, to get more interested in their own health. The second goal of this show is to navigate the healthcare system more effectively. And believe me, the shows that we've done with Anita and Clark are just the tip of the iceberg because Honestly, they could do more shows on some of the things that they had to go through and learn uh, during the course of their illness and treatment. Things that I think, you know, give me some uh, ideas of other directions that we may take this in. The third goal of the show is to really help people take more of an active role in their own health and wellness and disease prevention. I think that Clark has been a hero among heroes to really be the first in this profile and courage to just get out there and tell that story and just say from my own experience I am very interested in helping other people who may be facing perhaps not oral cancer but some other equally challenging experience uh, that really makes it critical that they have hope and that they realize that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So again, I want to thank you both. You've done an incredible job. And I can't say that um, I haven't learned from you as well. I think that that's the other part, is that no matter how much experience any of us might have, it is really a humbling experience to hear from the voice of people that have really walked in those shoes and what they have gone through. And it's also part of why people in the health and caring professions really love what they do, because it is this kind of rapport and feedback and experience that we want to be a part of. Again, I want to thank you both for being with us. Thanks for having thank us, you Nancy. Having You're welcome. Us. And thank you for listening. And I would hope that if you do know of someone that you think their story would be very, very interesting and uh, enlightening for others, please be sure to be in touch with me through my website. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today and that the information will help you in meeting your health goals. Catch this program and other conversations on the website, drnancyrn.com. Or you can write to me as well. I welcome your comments and feedback. Thank you for listening and join us again. And remember, with health, all things are possible.